Hello guys, Michael Bell here at Royal Eclipse Productions. Um, it is the 15th of December and today I want to do a really, really short video um, focused around the naming of your bus tracks within Pro Tools. Now, a few people had, had mentioned this to me, that they'd seen that in this section here, my in and out I had actually named my buses um, to, to, to not just be bus 15, 16, bus 13, 14. I'd actually given them uh, specific names that were relevant to whatever I happened to be working on in Pro Tools at the time. Um, so I want to do a quick video on it, basically explaining kind of why I do that and how you can set it up to work in your own workflow. So essentially the reason behind it is that I've only started doing this, if I'm honest, in the past kind of six to seven months. Um, I never used to do it. I used to just bust things all over the place. Um, um, as things got crazy, deadlines tightened, when I come back to a track because I got asked for a stem or I had to kind of I wanted to go in and get a sound that I previously liked to tweak it for another score or for whatever reason I just couldn't track where I'd bust things they were a nightmare they were all over the place so I made a conscious decision to, to kind of try and get a little more organized in the way that I'd basically organize my sessions so what you want to do I would recommend you seriously do do this um, it will save it in Pro Tools so you haven't got to keep doing it every time all you've got to really do is go up to this top section here where you've got setup and you want to go to IO which controls basically anything that goes in and out of Pro Tools both externally and internally so internally is going to be all about the buses this is these are internal buses within the box this isn't really relating to anything kind of outboard um, at this stage in where we're, what we're doing here this is all internal so it's worth noting that you get two menus Anything that between bus 1 and a bus 128 goes into bus menu 1, 129 to 256 is bus menu 2. So if I come out of the IO section for a second and go back into my mixer, when I choose out, then I choose bus, here we've got our two menus. Now how I structure things is anything in the, in the bus menu 2 or bus menu 129 to 256, these are master um, buses, in my opinion. That's how I view these. That's why they're in bold. So, any submixing or any kind of grouping of tracks um, before they hit these these master buses happen in this first menu. These here, the only thing I'll do is really balance the score. Maybe look at some overall EQ of that entire section. Um, but I won't really do too much in terms of mixing or mastering on these channels here. This is these are stem tracks that, that are just preps for, for bouncing stems basically. So what you want to do, an example of this, let's say for instance that this track here right, is kick drum 1, this track here is kick drum 2, and this can be a, an instrument track or a recorded audio track, it, it really doesn't matter, these are audio tracks. Um, but let's just say you've got that kick 1 and kick 2, then auxiliary 1 here, let's say you've got kick drums and then let's say, let's say auxiliary here, this is percussion, right? Let's put it in bold. So essentially the root, if I go back to the mixer, we're going to be sending these two kick drums, we're going to do a combined mix on both, we're going to send them out to kick drums, so then we could apply some overall compression or some overall EQ in our inserts here. Then we're going to send our kick drums out to our over, overall percussion kit, which eventually, I mean, you know, this 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 might then be toms, you know, this might be snare, and so on and so forth. You know, um, so all these kind of these are these are what these are what we would we would call submixes, whereas here I would call this a master a master kind of um, a group, I suppose is what I would call it. Um, and here you've got your your initial your initial sound coming in. So we got our initial. And these two here, these we've got our kind of submixes, then we've got our masters. So what I personally would do if I was in this situation, we're going for like a band setup. You want to go setup into your I/O. Instead of bus one and two, which isn't really that all that meaningful to me, I am literally going to call this kick drums or kicks. Let's call it kicks. And then I'm going to come all the way down to the to the um, uh, to the bottom here, and I've already got a percussion. Um, sub mix ready to go basically so what that essentially means in terms of your your actual uh, mixer is where we've currently got out one and two which is just going straight out to the to, to the stereo speakers I'm gonna route this out to kicks and I'm also gonna route this out in a bus to kicks well we go kicks I'm then gonna tell my kick drum tracks here to receive an input 
So not an output, an input from this, this, this channel we created, which is kicks. But I'm going to send it out. Remember that's in menu 2 because we're going to a master fader now. I'm going to send it to percussion, which is basically here. We've got no input, but we've got an output to 1 and 2. So we want to set our input to reflect that and call that percussion. So your root basically is kick drums 1 and kick drums 2, which you've done a little mix on here. You might have all sorts of things going on here in terms of EQ. Um, you might have EQ'd out, you know, let's, let's say we took some of the snare out and there was a little bit of splash from the cymbals, it was a live kit. You may have done something like that, just a really basic example. Um, you might have reflected that on a kick drum, say this was really, you wanted to get a little bit of a click from, from that microphone, something like that. Um, but these two tracks are now being condensed and they're going into your kick drums track. So we're going out of into kicks, we're coming in to the kicks, then we're going out to the percussion, we're going into the percussion track, and then we're going out to our master fader here. So it just means when you come back to that, it's a very clear route of what you've done. You know, so you're gonna do kind of, um, these, are, these are grouping all your different tracks from here. You're applying your effects either here or, or on your submix, this is entirely up to you. And then this is going to be an overall balance. You know, there you might have vocal, for instance. Um, and you can balance it, and then it all goes out to your master fader. So there you go, guys. I hope that's useful. Um, really, really, really brief video there. Um, but I hope it answers some of the questions that I've been I've been asked. Um, I look forward to seeing your next video. Please do rate, comment, and subscribe. Um, keep the conversation going. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.